Hello everyone, welcome to a first look at Oriental Empires, a new 4X game that's being published by Iceberg Interactive. Um, what I'm going to do here in this episode is just give you a brief tour of the confidential beta, which is what you can see I'm playing right here. At the moment it is beta build June 17th, 2016. Uh, that could change at any time. Uh, just beware, this is not a preview or a review, it's just a first look because the, the game is still under construction and a lot could change before it launches. So, anyway, Oriental Empires. Uh, you start off with several options here, single player, campaign, multiplayer. You can load an old game or go to options. Here you can change the sound settings and as you see I have it set very low so you can hear me. Uh, video settings, you know, you can, this is what it offers me for my computer right here. Screen resolution, um, I, I have it set on beautiful right now. Fantastic slows my computer down just a little bit. But the game's very nice. So even if you put it on something like simple or good, you're still going to be very happy with how the game looks. Like fastest is nice if you have kind of a, a weaker machine or older machine. Um, but, you know. I like beautiful right now. Not going to play in windowed mode. Uh, game settings, difficulty. This is where you choose your difficulty, which is a little bit different from most games. You know, most games, like when you start a game, that's where you choose a difficulty, whether it's single player or the campaign or something. But you do that here from game settings, so make sure you remember that. Uh, you can set a turn limit like this. Very easy. Increments of 50. Um, I like showing the grid. I think it's just easier for me to move around my units if I can see the grid. But, you know, it looks nice when you have it turned off. Uh, keyboard scroll rate, I just don't mess with that. It's, like, right in the middle. It's been just fine for me. Um, so let's start a single-player game. Takes a couple seconds to load. And then you're given like plenty of factions to choose from here you can see how many there are however you don't start with all of them a good number of them are locked as you can see and you unlock them as you play I really like that because of what it allows the designers and developers to do is to introduce you to factions that are a little bit simpler maybe easier to play uh, kind of show off the mechanics of the game and then later on give you more challenging or complex factions so you know some people don't necessarily like the idea of um, content being locked right from the beginning I actually do so I think that's I think that's pretty cool so and you know they they uh, they lock here play 200 turns I mean how hard is that right so you're given uh, let's see it's five factions to start off with here the Shang, the Zhu, the Han, the Chu, and the Shu. I don't know if I'm necessarily pronouncing those correctly but that's the best I can do. Um, each of them has uh, a little bit of a, a, I don't know, a special bonus or, or ability or something for the Shang. Uh, power development rate is increased by 20 percent you increase your authority by one and something about farmers. So I guess they specialize in farmers. It's not real clear. And there's not a tool tip there to kind of help you understand that. So uh, for the Zhu, they increase virtue of all new leaders by one, which is nice. That has to do with uh, how they command their units. Uh, chariot units add 20% to kill chance, which is a nice little buff. Again, they specialize in farmers. Uh, the Han, power development rate increased by 20%, add 20% kill chance with crossbows. Uh, the game that I'm currently playing, I'm playing as these guys. Uh, increased peasant happiness by 10%, that's what really attracted me to the Han. But they're, they have reduced combat effectiveness by 10%. So even though you have more chances to kill, like in general combat, you're just less effective. Uh, the Chu... Cultural development rate increased increased by twenty percent. 
Uh, noble happiness. You can attract nobles to your cities. This is increased by 10%. Naval units add 15% to kill chance. Um, I'm not sure how important the navy is in this game. Like, I haven't played far enough to really think that this is uh, a big deal, but maybe I'm wrong. Uh, and also reduces combat effectiveness by 10%. And then finally, the shoe craft development rate increased by 20%. So this is like your tech tree, your craft tech tree. You gain it 20% faster. Um, value of trade increased by 20%. So this helps with diplomacy. Uh, thought development, another tech tree reduced by 20%. So they don't really you research the thought tree. And I'll show you what that is in just a minute. And then again with farmers. So... I mean, why not? Let's pick the shoe. Alright, so you click play and then it kind of goes dark for a minute and then it generates the world. And the first time you play, it's going to give you a lot of these uh, help screens and, and tool tips and things like that, which is really nice. I do recommend reading them because there's a lot going on in this game. Up here in the upper left-hand corner, you have an advisor. Um, she will help you um, through the game, you know, give you advice and kind of explain things. And then also you have this info button right here that you can click on anytime to get some information on what you're doing. Um, over here on the left, you have a lot of uh, different buttons. The first is diplomacy. It opens the diplomacy window. Right now we haven't met anybody, so it's empty. And then you have um, your technology and culture. And these are the things that I was telling you about earlier that uh, where you get the plus 20% bonus or 10% penalty. You have power, which is uh, researching things like walls, flood control, seed transplantation, uh, military drill, like this is kind of your military tech tree kind of right here. Not not weapons and things, but like your um, your tactics, okay? And then over here is like city improvements and uh, empire improvements, that sort of thing. Craft, this is where you get more into the physical technology, uh, like armors, um, also um, here with uh, jade and, and precious metals so those can be useful for um, trade goods uh, bronze is kind of the starting material for all your armor and your weapons and you can advance that um, and also you can develop like kind of cool technology like a churn or a chunk yeah a churn drill which deep holes can be bored by placing a bit made of heavy wooden log with a sharpened with a sharpened rock. Oh, they got a few little spelling and grammatical errors here. That's okay. On one end of the ground, and then repeated raising and dropping a heavy weight into the other end. Longer shafts can be bored using teams of oxen to rotate the bit while water is poured into the borehole to wash out the crushed rock. And so this will lead, you know to other technology, which is, you know, stuff you've seen in other games. Um, thought, this one's kind of interesting. This is like the, the, the philosophy, religion, sort of, of uh, the empires and oriental empires. Uh, sh shamanism, national myth, ancestor worship, divination, and yin and yang. And these things unlock some really interesting technologies. Like the I Ching. Here you get if you research divination. Um, let's see. Where did I see? Um, oh, there it is. No. Where, where is it? Oh, the Mandate of Heaven. Which if you studied... Uh, Chinese culture at all like these things really are important um, and so that adds a lot of nice flavor to the game and then finally knowledge um, 
horse domestications where you start and then you can improve to horse riding. Of course, you can research the com composite bow and then if you have both this and this, you can research horse archery. Um, here we have the calendar, astronomy, hot cold theory. I mean, this is all just really fascinating stuff. So uh, I'm looking forward to getting to know it a little bit better. Okay. Um, this, these are your imperial edicts, and you don't start with very many, just the one. Um, it permanent effects adds a general character, but authority negative one, cancellation effects a negative one for 20 turns. So I'm not going to mess with that right now. Um, financial summary here's our income, here's our in expenses. So we're in the black here, that's good. Uh, last turn didn't do anything, and then whole game, obviously this. But it'll chart your uh, progress as you go. I will also like the background art for this. These, This is pretty cool. And then player status. Uh, this will give you updates on how you're coming along when it comes to your different victory conditions, where you are with influence, and then you can automate, like you can automate your technology, it'll research it for you, automate new settlements, automate farming, that, that's pretty cool. In fact, there's some more automation I'll show you in just a minute. Uh, victory points. Okay, these, this is, this is how you can win, and I just haven't played enough to get uh, a victory yet, but there are several different paths to victory, and a lot of different things you're going to want to keep track of. Uh, like your kill list, that sort of thing. Uh, how many soldiers you lost. So this is all this is all pretty cool. How the game gives you a lot of data, but it kind of keeps it out of your way. Like you can even make this whole menu disappear if you want just by clicking that. So that's pretty cool. Let's look at our city. Um, we you start with one city like you know most forex games double clicking on it here opens the city UI um, up here in the upper left is where you can build buildings you can start with the you know the typical granary uh, the bazaar which is like marketplace and then a boyer so since you start with a boyer I usually start with researching um, where to go Ah, with a composite bow here. And one thing I didn't show you, I need to go back and show you. You're going to research something from each of these four texts all at once. So let's say here with knowledge, we're going to research the bow first. And so it puts it down here at the bottom. And then for thought, um, we're going to go with divination. And so it's going to put it here at the bottom. Craft. Well, we definitely want to work bronze and then power. Um, we'll go with seed transplantation. So now you're going to research each of these each turn. And that's pretty cool. All right, back to the city. You um, want to increase your population, obviously, and you want to increase your, uh, your zone of control here. And you do that by developing your land. So right here, you can convert this land to farmland. And you can see it takes a certain amount of your population to do that. And let's say you want to convert, oh, um, this land to farmland. And that puts it in the queue. And then this land. And then this land. All right. You just kind of click on them, and they'll do that for you. Now, you can also set your... Uh, your city on automation like I showed you automation earlier over here okay oh, wait a minute no it wasn't there was it here yeah there you can automate all this and you can automate your city and you can have it focus on growth income defense military producing units culture all that stuff um, that's pretty cool at the beginning I tend to like micromanage this so we're going to start with the granary we'll add that you add it by right clicking then we'll do a bazaar and then the boyer 
Later on, once it gets big enough, you can convert this into a city, which gives you additional bonuses, but you have to build it like a building. Um, it's not something just does it automatically. And then over here you can see what you have built. And so far we just have a town. All right. Over here is how you recruit your units. Nobles uh, are well equip equipped and ready to fight. Their deadly dagger axes can deal lethal blows and their armor gives them good protection at the expense of being heavy and clumsy. So you can recruit them for 35 gold or whatever the unit of currency is. Militia is uh, a lighter unit, uses short spears and light shields. These soldiers can huddle together to defend themselves and are nimble enough to operate in difficult terrain. Their basic equipment means they are easy to train and equip, which means they're cheaper. So only 15 gold. And then civilians, um, this is kind of like a settler unit. Uh, maybe this is a group of adventurous souls setting off to create a new life for themselves in an unclaimed area of the world. And maybe they are refugees from an advancing army. Maybe they are being forced to relocate by the whims of some unscrupulous overlord. Whatever the reason, you can use them to found a new settlement in a suitable location. Be sure to protect them carefully as they have little defense against enemy soldiers. All right. Up here, you have your different resources. There's your income, uh, your food income, and you can click on it to get your details. So we're consuming 10 food a turn, and we're producing 10 food a turn. So it's a good thing we're working on farms. Here's unrest. Right now, it looks like our people are unhappy. Not much we can do about it. Labor. We have 10 population. Uh, here's growth. Okay, we don't, we have a little bit of an overcrowding problem, but we have no food surplus, so we're kind of not in a good shape here. Uh, here's what our population is doing. Six units of population are farming, two are constructing farms, and two are working inside the city to construct that granary for us. Um, here are the different, uh, oh wait. I was just showing you that, right? There's income, and we just went through all that. So you can click on it on each one of these or use the tabs here. I forgot. All right, here, land improvements. Um, this one is, it's not letting me click on but that's clear land right there. This is build a city. Um, and then these are build a farm. So you can kind of... Uh, switch between those like this to get a different view okay all right let's see what else um, the zoom is pretty cool um, let's see I'm, I haven't figured out exactly oh these are my armies sorry these are my different armies um, we can exit the city UI here I've got a small army right here. And you can zoom in really close in this game. Like really close <laughs> in this game. Okay. So uh, moving armies is pretty typical. Left click select. Well, get an info box. Right click move. And, you know, you can set up several turns worth. If you want to look at your leader, he's right here. Um, right now he's got authority zero. This is his personal authority of the leader, which is added to the overall authority of the empire. It will increase if he wins major battles and fall if he loses. Uh, so far, hasn't fought in any battles. Over here, we got a little bit of a larger army, but this one also has a settler unit in it right here see settlers the civilians and we want to send them maybe down here so we'll send them there um let's see anything else I can show you I think that's about 
about it. This brings up the menu, load, save, settings, quick game, continue game. And then right here is the end turn button. Now, you notice that when I assign these units to move, they didn't actually move. In this game, they move after you click the end turn button. And it's kind of like watching a movie, and it's really slow, but you can speed it up. Which is nice, which is what I usually do. And then you have the next turn. And you saw all the other players up here kind of move around. So it looks like we got some kind of resource here. It's not going to tell me what that is exactly. Oh, steep hills cannot be farmed. But it looks like it gives you a defensive bonus. All right. I think that's where we will end this uh, episode of a first look at Oriental Empires. Thank you very much for joining me. In the next one, I'm going to pick up in a game where I've already played a few turns, so that way you can see what that looks like. This has been Troy Kostasik for Exploraminate. Take care, everyone.